Welcome to Louisville. So for all the Fent guys out there, here's your Fent. I couldn't tell you anything about it. It's green. It's too dark though. Driving a Fent. Well, we're not really driving it. There just isn't any fence around us. I've seen one go by on the highway one time. Look at that. You could put six packs of soda in here. I'm here with Ash with uh, Agco, and we're standing next to a new uh, 1000 series Challenger tractor. Um, Ash, what can you tell me about this tractor that we're looking at here? It's actually been a game changer for us. The brand new Challenger 1000 series has kind of broke the mold between the traditional road crop front wheel assist tractor or your articulated four wheel drive tractor. It bridges the gap, ranging from 380 horsepower to 515 horsepower. So okay. You can really fill in that need there. So instead of having two tractors, you now have one that can do both jobs. Sure. So I see this is a 1038. I got to assume this is the 380 horsepower. Exactly model. right. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Great talking to you. Thanks yeah, a lot. You I gotta climb up inside of this thing. I haven't been in anything that is a Challenger series for quite some time, but I definitely have a soft spot for Challengers because I've actually got family ties to Jackson, Minnesota, where a lot of this stuff is built. So I gotta check this out. This thing is just a beast. It's got a big white planter behind it. Uh, 24 row 30, so it's got a 60 foot planter behind it. Randy and Casey and I were having a debate. How big are those tanks on that planter? That's a 20 foot 4V rib belt. Times two. You oh. buy the bottom, you get the top three. Oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah, but I'm gonna say this belt costs at least sixty dollars. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but you can finance it there. Fun fact, my grandpa was a Massey dealer in the 80s, 70s and 80s. My dad had several Massey combines. I'm here with uh, Greg Sauter of uh, 360 Yield Center. They got a lot of cool things going on in here. Yeah, Zach, this is uh, 360's new dash product for starter. And so when it comes to starter, we're looking at lowering your cost. We believe passionately starter can increase yield as much as 12 to 15 bushel an acre, but the cost is pretty high. So when you look at this technology, you can see here, every time a seed comes out of the seed, trend, seed tube, we fire the starter. So we're able to cut our cost by 50%. So where it might have cost you $28 an acre for starter, now we can do it for $12 to $14. So we're going to use half the product, and we're only going to put it right beside the seed. So as each seed comes out, it fires. The minute I would come in and cover it so you can't see it, and then it's gonna it's gonna shut it off. So as each seed comes in, it's gonna take and it's gonna fire. So simple technology that really reduces the cost. So you're getting the same effect of starter fertilizer by using half as much, really. That's exactly right. How much you pay for that sandwich, Randy? Nine seventy-five. That's not bad. A little bit of look meat. Look how big it looks on the on the poster. Yeah, it looked a lot I bigger up it there. Was a, it was a deal. That's weak weak sandwiches. Yeah. What they have here. They got beer. So I'm here with Nathan from John Deere and he's going to go over the true set technology on their tillage equipment. So go ahead and show us kind of what the true set is and what, what you do with that. Sure. So the display you're looking at that it's operating on is the 4640. So this is. So the that's new, a new monitor. Yep, new monitor yep. that's basically kind of replacing the 2630. So we've got this rigged up where we have a pump turned on. So this is kind of mimicking what true set is going to do. So this is our true set run page. So if you think about it, when you're doing any tillage work, do you ever get out of the cab and actually go adjust the implement whenever you get into a sandy knoll, a little more clay? Probably not. No, no, no. So for variability in the fields, we're not really getting out and adjusting the, the tillage equipment. Exactly. 
on it. Right. So we're trying to give you the ability to do that from the pad so you don't have to get out of the So it basically, it'll adjust itself for variability within the field. Correct. Lighter and heavier soils, heavy clay versus the sand. Yep. So you can control your disc separate from your rippering point, separate from your closing disc, separate from the closing disc. Just to maintain also... that consistency throughout the field. Yep. That's and impressive. The other nice thing is you can load a tillage prescription which is basically your soil types. Yep. And then you can write a script for each one. And then it's running through the field. You don't adjust anything. You all that to adjust that script. Okay. So it's pretty neat. So now we're writing tillage prescriptions. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, not a problem. This is a grain bag unloading system that uses airbags on the sides of the grain bin instead of the standard power sweep. So there's less to go wrong, it's safer to use, and I was actually told that it only uses about one pound of air pressure to operate it. So if a mouse does chew a hole in it or uh, you get some damage to the bag, uh, you can use it until the bin is empty and then uh, after that you can actually clean out the inside and patch it. Casey, you want to explain to everybody watching how this works? Goes in there, grain goes down here, straw goes out the back. Makes sense. You guys got that? Good. You're an excellent teacher. In a lot of my recent experience, this area here is, is just for catching snow. For the people that don't know how the inside of a rotor combine works, this is a good, a good view at it. So here's the, the uh, accelerator that shoots the grain up into the rotor here which threshes it out, down into the bottom, into the augers, and back into the sieves. Still pedaling pretty good. I'm here with Aaron from Precision Planting and he's going to talk for a little bit about the, their new Smart Firmer product. Smart Firmer is Precision Planting's new tool. We measure organic matter, moisture, residue. On the go. On the go. While you're planting. And soil temperature. Uh, all agronomic insights to help us achieve the best emergence and also we use organic matter to control our hybrid, our population and a liquid fertilizer on the go. I have an organic matter map here. Um, you can see how it uh, creates high definition zone. And so we'll be able to control population and put higher population on our good soils and lower population on our forest. And this is that, that's a planted map? And a fly yeah. map as after we planted. And then we also are reporting these uh, clean furrows, our residue. Uh, in the furrow, our soil temperature, all up to the 2020 to give you the visibility in the furrow. So we're doing this live on our stand here. So it's live testing, live testing the soil as you're planting in order to basically achieve your variability with everything on the hill. Very true. That's pretty cool. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. This Monero corn header is built with specially shaped snouts and offset gathering chains to help minimize ear loss in awkward conditions when working around corners or at tough angles. Everything's so close together. And then the hoods, you can see how low the hoods are on the back. Normally when you go down or you're trying to get that corn, you're trying to lift it up, up, up. And then you get it to go here and it just sits there. You can't do anything with it. You need a corn reel. So Gearinghoff now has a platform head that I have not seen yet. That's different. Center drive? Yeah.
This is a robotic milking machine that the cows can walk into at their leisure. It tests them as they walk in so it knows which cow that it's milking at the time. And it actually tests them as far as uh, nutrients go and the amount of milk that they're producing. And it will feed them as they're in the machine according to the nutrients that the machine believes the cows need for the specific cows in order to be healthy. It will also monitor the quality of milk and the amount of milk coming out. here with David from Farmer's Edge. He's going to talk about some of their technology that they've got going on that can help us on the farm. So we've got one of our satellites here. This is actually a one-to-one -one scale. So this is full size for what is actually up flying around in orbit. We've got 175 of these up in, the, in orbit right now taking daily 3.1 meter resolution. And so you guys, Farmer's Edge actually owns these things. Uh, we're actually partnered with a company called Planet Labs. Okay. Yep. So they've got, they, they control those. We are the sole distributor of uh, they, they done satellite imagery. Okay. Yep. So as a farmer, uh, for me signing up with Farmer's Edge, how, how can this benefit me? Yeah, so uh, we, we've tried for a long time to get the frequency and the resolution that really makes an impact for uh, uh, scouting tool. Uh, this makes a very impactful early season scouting tool, bringing in not only standard NDVI maps, but bringing in our scout maps. Uh, okay. Where we get relative differences within the field, so you can see a daily image uh, and actually walk to that spot in the field using your scouting app. Every single day. Every single day. That's cool. Well, I appreciate it. Hey, thank, thank you. Thank you much. Here we go. So we're watching a spinner spreader with swath control. That's impressive. Wow, that is cool. Randy really likes it. <laughs> Two thousand bushels. How long is that track? Ten feet. Yeah. Pretty close, I bet. That is a massive cart. We found Randy the MP's booth. He took off running after this American tile plow. Yes. <laughs> my red fans out there I'm over here at the case booth I'm talking to Kelly about their new corn header that they just released here at the show why don't you go ahead and tell me Kelly what what you guys have got here to offer this new, new corn header. Uh, case IH is launching a brand new narrow row corn header so we have these available in three different uh, models a 12 row 16 row and an 18 row in 20 and 22 inch spacing and available in both standard and shopping versions so all new corn heads specifically geared for the narrow row uh, producer out there. So what are some of the features that you guys are proud to brag about with this new header? Sure. We want a corn head that picks clear, in other words, snaps the ear off efficiently, brings it in, and processes the stock. They said we wanted to be able to um, uh, pick up down corn better. So uh, we've designed our uh, dividers and hoods to pick up down corn, provide a nice wide opening for that unit to be able to sweep the corn into, um, also to save more grain. So things like uh, patent corn movers right here to help funnel the ears and any loose kernels into the uh, row unit and all the way in the corn head. And also producers were looking for a corn head that better match the size of the combine. So we spent a lot of time figuring out how to take weight out of the row unit. So as an example, we were able to design out 100 pounds of weight in each row unit. It doesn't sound like much until you add 18, 18 rows. Then some additional drives and the like, we were able to take over 2,000 pounds out of an 18 row corn head weight. I appreciate it, thank you. You bet. So I got Mike Les. And Mike, Mike and Mike, I just realized Mike that, Mike from, from, from Ohio, Farming yes. Dreams. Both, yeah. both from Ohio, yes. Mike and Mike. Yep. Yep. Mike and Mike show, company of And this is our cruise. <laughs> we got the camera girl. We got the, what are you, special effects? Special effects. He does uh, the 
demos. GoPro. Go GoPro and demos, demolition. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Yes. So we can have two cameras going at once. Yeah. 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 Okay, so welcome guys. I caught the two biggest celebrities here at the National Farm Show in Louisville. Mike Les and Zach Johnson, the Minnesota Millennial Farmer. I didn't think you knew my last name, so I thought you were going to kiss you. Snapchat? Oh, yeah, I, was just, geez, geez, I don't know Snapchat very well. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to you live at the 2018 National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky. Well, that's a narrator. That was, that was impressive. <laughs> that was impressive. Will you do, like, I'll send all my videos, dude. You just need background all I thought it sounded pretty good as I said it, but now I'll listen to it later. I'm like, boy, it sounds uh, stupid. It sounds like really sounds stupid. Stupid. Yeah. Well, that's why anytime I'm doing a play, I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah, you don't watch it. Yeah, just to delete that one. That's, most of the time it's me and her, and like, I get her just like randomly. And no, like, just give I, me the look, like, 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 why are you taking me right now? Yeah. Would be on the run. Yeah, yeah, I think it does. I think it does. So, anyway, so it's worked. So then I what? <laughs> okay, Randy, why don't you uh, tell me a little bit about this hardy Rubicon 9000 we're standing next to? Well, as you can see, it's it's maroon. Yep, it's maroon. Okay. Yep, it's uh, Rubicon 9000. Mm -hmm. Aluminum so, booms. Aluminum booms. It's tall, you know. It's tall. I'm nearly six feet, and I get almost clear. My sure. Head. So it is tall. Yep. It's got a spigot here, and then over each corner. Each corner has its own individual tire and rim. Yep. I'm gonna try going upstairs here because I had no idea Hardy made a self-propelled sprayer. But it appears as though they do, and they call it the Rubicon. And I'm gonna go up here and rest my back by hanging out in the cab for a minute. Front-mounted booms, which I wish we had. I've never driven one with front-mounted booms. 2,200 gallon tank. 2200 gallon tank? Jeez. Yeah. Hey, it's got the buddy seat. Alright. We should take this back to Minnesota. Buddy up. It's got Harley peg. It does. I noticed that. The Harley yeah. peg. Yeah. Only on one side. Yeah. I see, I like to rest my boots against the windshield. This pedals Very make it difficult. Sure one needs to run the gas pedal. Well, what's this for then? I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Okay. So, so cliff notes of what we're looking at here is that neither Randy or I have any idea what's going on, but it feels nice to sit down for a little bit. Yep. So it looks like Hardy's got a second sprayer here, second model with a rear mounted boom. Uh, some people prefer it in the front and some people like it in the rear. I'm going to climb inside this, uh, the other model here, which it looks like they call an alpha. It comes uh, stock with a big yellow tank and uh, red booms. I'm here at the GEA Farm Tech booth and I'm talking to Ken about their uh, automatic feed pusher they've got here. I'm not a livestock guy, but I know a little bit about these things, so can you tell me how this works? Okay, this is primarily going into dairy farms to push up feed, basically, you know, to give the a little bit more labor efficiency and to push the feed up more times, cows will eat a little bit more, a little bit more production, lower, lower cost of labor. Lower cost of labor, so, and so then you don't have to take a skid steer into the barn and no. push that feed back in for the cows. No. Do you see any more productivity out of it as far as the cows go? Yeah. Yeah. Every time that thing goes through, it kind of stimulates the cows. You know, they want to. You know, they want to come up and eat again. Well, that's cool. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ken. Good. Thank you. Yeah. So long, Louisville. Wee. Wee. That's the best part of farming. <laughs> I know. You're gonna have to edit this one out. <laughs> Getting down and dirty with them. <laughs> Can't it edited itself up. You're gonna have to
mean, just real quick here, we've got uh, one of our. Uh... Yeah. My bad. <laughs> you want to feel better? You go to China Buffet and clean yourself up.